Good morning, guys. Today, we're gonna do a whole entire summer garden tour. So, stay tuned. Okay, we are in what Donald calls mini food forest. Um, it's under this huge oak tree. And it's also where we have this this tree and these over here provide the shade. Um, as you know, here in Central Florida, we are right in the middle. Some, the University of Florida puts us in zone 9A, where the Farmer's Almanac puts us in zone 9B. So we're right on the line. Um, we err on the side of caution so when we bring in plants we want to make sure that they're good for zone 9a um, because a is going to have more frost more uh, different climate changes than say the next zone but in this mini food forest here i'll just give you a general we have uh turmeric growing we have ginger growing we have mini bananas growing this is beauty berries and it looks like they're starting to change. Um, this is a, a Florida native. And we're going to be, I'm going to, this year, I'm going to try my best to collect the berries to make jam. Then uh, we also got dragon fruit growing up the tree here. And all down in here. Um that is going to be the ginger and then we got some pineapples growing um that's a mango tora that's a root crop the coffee did not come back we had three coffee plants in the back we also have sweet potato vines growing everywhere to help try to suppress the weeds um Yes, Sarge. Oh my goodness, Sarge. I'm okay. It's okay, baby. Hey, hey, hey. I know cameras are scary. <laughs> anyway, um, this here is the miracle fruit. Right now, this is Virginia creeper. This is kind of like a a uh, a toxin plant. I'm allergic to it. Some people aren't, but there are a lot of people that are. And I made a video on how to um, help with the um, with that type of uh, plant. I can't untangle it right now because this thing right here has thorns on it. So I'll have to get my gloves to dethorn it, or I mean to get it off that. This is another mango, and that is a grapevine. That's native here. Um, this is the Jacoba Cava. This vine, these are, or this is a native vine, but you can actually eat the leaves. We learned that in that food foraging. There's Donald's voodoo plant, which is falls in the same um, line as the um, the corpse plant. And then here's that tora, tora, tora. And then we have a volunteer papaya coming up, which lovely. This is an elderberry that uh, we found the branch broken off, but that's an elderberry plant. We stuck it in the ground to see if it'll grow. And then this guy here that is tangled up with this vine, which I'll I'll get the vine off it later. This is Jacopacaba. And I don't see any fruit yet. The fruit, the um, grapes actually grow on the bark. And then uh, another, another banana. So that's one thing you'll find on our property. We have an abundance of bananas. And then there's also passion fruit. Let me see. Not sure if I can get into there. There was a passion fruit vine growing up the tree, but that's kind of Virginia creeper there. But yeah, this is the uh, mini food forest, as Donald calls it. 
And then here is our avocado tree. We planted for protection under the oak from frost. This is the strawberry tree plant. Um, the top part died from last year's frost, but it is coming back from the ground. And then over here, we have another mango and whew, that's kind of low. She wins. Wait till he passes. Okay. We learned also in our food foraging class, this tiny little delicate vines are called creeping cucumber. And the reason it's called this, let me see if I can find any, is they have these little seeds. I gotta find some. We've been eating them. <laughs> since we found out what it is. I was gonna pull this plant all up and get rid of it, but it's a source of food. And you just have to pull back. Let me try this area over here. I'm trying to be really careful not to step on it either. All right, let me try again somewhere else. Hold on. And let me see if I can find the flower. There it is. Little tiny yellow flowers. This is an edible plant. It'll have, let's see if I can find one. There it is. Right down in there. See that? Oh, here's another one. Here. When the flowers produce, they produce these little, almost looks like a cucumber, but doesn't have the thorns. Kind of looks like a watermelon. Now, if you see them and they're red to pur dark purple to almost black, do not eat them unless you're constipated. They're a natural laxative. But, as you can tell, they're crunchy. And they look, they taste just like a cucumber. They look like a cucumber. They're good. So, that one's too small. But yeah, wild creeping cucumber. We have our volunteer tomatoes. Got one there, one there, and one there. These are the Everglades. And they are native and they grow like crazy all over this place. Oh, look at what I want all the assassin bugs on it. Because everybody's coming out. Though they, they are harmless. They actually eat the aphids, so I just let them be. But yeah, I got this nice big bush here. We got one right here. And then Donald planted a papaya right there. Got another one here. So this is all in with, uh, with the understory of our oaks that we have where the animals are at. And then over here, we had some bonus. This is our elderberry. One of them. 
I have to harvest that soon. But uh, nobody's flowering. But this is an elderberry. There's a couple more over there. Um, and then along with elderberry in here. Uh, let me see where did I find it. Yeah, here it is. We started cutting this down and that's when I noticed. I'm like, here's another elderberry. This one's a young one. So next year it'll produce. And then I have a ton of beauty berries just all over the place. Beauty berries all over the place, which totally enjoy. Um, our bananas, we have a lot of racks this year. Um, ever, we have a rack here. This one fell down. We're not gonna be able to save the rack. We didn't, we, it fell down during the last storm. Um, it's too small to harvest or not. I mean, it's too soon to harvest it, but I may talk to Donald into letting it plump up as much as we can like that. I'm thinking we might be able to prop it up, but I'm not, not too sure about it. So, but other than that, these are ice cream bananas over here is, I think the dwarf Cavendish bananas. And then we got a pawpaw tree and then a cassava there. But all of these guys are doing really good since uh, we've been slowly but surely trying to get things fixed around here. Since we ended up with COVID a while back, we're, we are literally like two weeks behind. That's another reason why we haven't been videoing as much because we've been trying to play catch up. This is the ever bearing bush mulberry it's just huge and then here's more um bananas with racks there's these are all ice cream bananas oh look there's a new rack new boom new rack look at that brand new bloom um there is some ginger and turmeric mixed in on the ground Ooh, let me get out of the sun a little bit but yep here's another rack this one should be ready pretty soon see how nice and plump they're getting that's in there i think this one's going to be producing the next rack right there by my window um more ice cream bananas and like i said got another rack right there got another one right there and I had a new fire bush come up, so I'm happy about that. So now I got two fire bushes. Over here we got cassava. This is my jasmine. And that is, I believe, the Mona Lisa. I know we have a Mona Lisa and then we got a little print. That's the little prince over here. So this is the Mona Lisa. Um, and as you can tell, my jasmine, Looks like there's other, oh, Virginia creeper. I really hate that plant. But those are seed pods for my jasmine. Oh, but there's another set right there, I just noticed. And I probably have more on the other side, but I need to have Donald go in there and kind of weed whack a little bit so I can get back in behind here. Oh. It's a little overgrown, but I probably got, oh, there are seed pods right here. Get that. So I'm gonna have a lot of, oh, and there's another one right there. Yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of seed pods for that. Um, this is the Pakistani mulberry, little prince. This was our brown turkey fig. And unfortunately, it is not doing good. This tree here we found out is a Carolina uh, weeper, which is in the willow family. Um, 
not sure what we had planted there obviously it's dead this is the lsu this is hanging on the high heat seems to be really taking a toll on them we got some lemongrass some more bananas and then this guy here is my mexican sunflowers and they are tall and then over here next to it this is my regular mulberry tree That is the Cuban oregano. Uh, that had something in it. I don't know what it was. And then we got a couple pineapples around the base of the mulberry here. This is like our seating area. And then we have much, many, many more bananas. And we got another rack right there, right by our door. And then that's Donald's grilling area. And then over here, this is my river birch. Um, more lemongrass, grapes. Um, we planted bamboo to try to help suppress the weeds. This is a uh, this is the bamboo here. That's bamboo. Mainly we want to use it for giving, uh, help suppress the weeds, give us some privacy, and to also be able to harvest the stalks and use that for having the viney stuff grow on. This is the Florida home grapes. And we're gonna be harvesting soon. These grapes are sweet. Got a lot of them, Ooh, especially over there. Um, in the back is, we don't have anything really. This is my bay leaf tree. And then this is the Pam. And the Pam has actually produced some too this year. Last year it didn't produce. And then all over here, this is the Muscadine grapevine goes all the way around across our gate <clears throat> muscadine grapes are native to the south um, so we'll be harvesting them soon because they are turning this is a loquat um, we have blueberries in here but we're thinking about tearing out the blueberry bushes where it, it's just um, we want to I think I want to use this for something else. Maybe my moringa. I'll grow my, some of my moringa here. But muscadine grapes have to be a dark purple before you can harvest them. Otherwise, they taste really, really sour. Our blackberry bush is doing great. Um, as you know, blackberries, they grow from the bottom. Uh, they grow from the bottom. And the old growth dies every year, so we gotta cut this back. But the new growth literally I have blackberries again. It's the middle of summer and it's hot right before I mean look how huge that is. I'm gonna have to harvest. I also have a surprise. This here is the is a Mexican sunflower as well. Look at that. So pretty. Nitrogen fixers are really good. Okay, inside the greenhouse area. I'm going to start off. Pigeon pea is growing good with the heat. Um, the other ones are kind of stunted. That is my red crepe myrtle. That's just a flowering tree, bright red flowers. Same with the pink. I have a pink crepe myrtle as well over there. And then this is the red sorrel experiment. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it, it, it kind of got out of control. <laughs> so this year, I'm going to have fun harvesting um, they start producing flowers in the fall, 
which will then I turn and um, I'll collect some flowers. I'll leave, I'll collect some for seed as well. Um, but the flowers produce a, a callus that's uh, five to six prongs. And what you do is you take it off of the seed pod and then you dehydrate it and then you can turn it into red sorrel tea, which Donald loves. Also growing in this craziness, I have cotton. Here's one of the cotton plants. Looks like it pushed out. This is a cotton tree or a cotton bush. I grew it in, in with the red sorrel for fun. Uh, here's one of the pods. So once this tree starts dying, this will then produce the cotton right out of the flower pod there. Um, looks like there's some up there. The flowers are either white or pink. There's another one. And um, I just grow the cotton for fun. It, it, it's a neat thing to see and have it produce. Then I have my cranberry hibiscus. And as you know, cranberry hibiscus is good to eat raw in salads, on hamburgers and tacos. It has a citrus um, <laughs> kick to it and it's not spicy. It's like a nice citrus pop. So it adds uh, flavor. This is the Mennonite Sulgrum that we did also as an experiment and it's just gorgeous. Um, we actually grew this mainly for fun. <clears throat> Here's it before the seeds come in. Um, mainly it's to uh, help feed the birds is what it comes down to. And then in the back, more lemongrass. We got lemongrass growing along. This was the baby corn. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, the, it, it, the, the sun just beat the crap out of them. So we'll be pulling this row up. Then over here is Job's Tears. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I wasn't able to harvest all of them in time. <clears throat> so I'm just going to let them go. But this was a really unique thing to grow. Apparently the seeds. Oop, one came right off you can use as jewelry people make uh use the seeds for jewelry and they come in different colors um but we'll probably pull that up the kale did not make it at all we had to take all the kale out but in its place i started growing my baby moringas So these two rows have the babies, and these are the parents. Moringa is known as a superfood. Um, it grows in Africa. It can grow in sandy soil, good soil. Oh, Mr. Bumblebee. Hi, Mr. Bumblebee. Let me let go. There you go. Um, but these are the flowers. Yeah, there we go. Mr. Bumblebee's going. Now I could. Oh, no, you're right there. Hi. Um, but they have a lot of super vitamins and minerals. You, you can eat it raw. It does have a very strong, um, like a citrus punch to it. Um, but yeah, this one's growing back. And these were the ones we had to move. I got to get in here and get the vines off of them. And look, we got another banana rack. <clears throat> and I think there's another one over there too. Um, but they're doing really good in this area. So we're going to leave them here. Um, they were growing up against the house and they'll get taller than the house. So they'll get taller than that. And they're great. Um, I dehydrate these, the leaves. And then I, um, we use them in our, with cooking. Uh, we just add it to the uh, food we're cooking with, give us extra vitamins and minerals. 
here is our mango trees, which are doing really good. Now that we took the top off, um, they're growing up top really, really well. And then also I have an extra cranberry hibiscus in here. I'll be uh, probably transplanting that once we get going with what we're gonna be doing in here. Here's the soursop. That's doing really good. And then over here behind the greenhouse, or in front of it, this is a lemon and a lime tree we got growing right here. This is the loquat. It produced, again, this, oh, there's more. It is so weird. These trees don't really produce during the heat. Well, look at that. I got some sea pods there. Um, so things are kind of baffling us this year on the way it's growing. And then all down the line here, we just have bananas to help shade the house mainly. So these are all ice cream bananas, so they'll get really tall. All right, we're in our garden area. This is a flying dragon. It's supposed to produce a citrus type fruit. This year it had flowers, but when we had a really bad rainstorm, really a lot of wind and rain, all the flowers fell off, so not sure. But this is also, this part here is our banana growth. We are literally growing bananas and mulberries in here. We planted some mulberry trees, some sticks, like there's a stick right there. And so that way we can start getting um, this area under control with the flooding. And then this is our ice cream bananas. And we just have bananas everywhere. This is going to um, bananas, mulberries, and sugar cane really love a lot of water. They're heavy feeders. So by putting them in the areas where we have flooding, we're hoping to help control it a lot better in our area. And then going up to the septic mound. So here is our pineapple row. Um, and with the heat and humidity, I have not been able to come out here to take care of anything, but yeah, there's like about 12 pineapples in here that are growing great. You can see them. I just got a weed wet or get the weed weeds out of here. But as you can tell, we got bananas all along the house to help with, uh, help with the, uh, shading of the sun. This is our seed table. And as you can tell, everything's been planted. We literally planted or got rid of it if it didn't grow. Sweet potato box. Sweet potatoes gone wild. <laughs> and then there's my tomatoes. This is the second year in a row where the heat has been way too bad. And like I said, here where we're at this past week, the temperatures, even though they were 92, 93, 94, with the humidity, it was 102, 105. One time we even got up to 111 degrees. Heat and humidity just kills us. And it also kills the plants. Um, even though we water, um, it, it's just, it's a disappointment because I love tomatoes and I'm struggling for the third year in a row to even grow them. I can get the green tomatoes, but before they turn red, like here's a good example, before they turn red, they're already going bad. And I'll give that one to the birds. But yeah. So every, every two days I come out here and I just go through. I try really hard to weed the tomatoes that are bad off oh, throw that one. 
and in hoping that it will stimulate the plant to keep going. I mean, obviously they're still going. Uh, so if they're trying, I'm still going to try, but I have to come in and, you know, get rid of them. So it's, it's like a losing battle for me. Can't handle it. it stinks. All right. So on to better news, Donald's pepper patch. Oh my goodness. We have large cherry peppers. We have poblanos. We have um, jalapenos. The ghost peppers and the Carolina Reapers never came up. This is the Jedi. This is the experimental one. We, we were about ready to go to toss it, but it came back. So we're just going to let it do its thing. But yeah, Donald's going to be getting some peppers. We do have a couple bananas, banana peppers, and some sweet peppers, but that's pretty much it. This is the dwarf basil. Look how pretty. It's so stinking cute. Look at that. I am definitely keeping this. This the, and it smells so good. That's just, this is basil. Um, then over here, we put the seedlings from the uh, from the table into here, hoping that it would get some protection. And it looks like a few of them. That's a peanut. So obviously, uh, we missed a peanut there. But then we got a couple that are. We could not read the signs on them, so I have no idea what they are. They could be tomatoes or tomatillos. Don't know. That's the sycamore tree. Um, we're covering up the stump because we don't have time to finish cutting down the log. So we're hoping that'll die, keep it suppressed. This was a red soil that popped up or Donald planted it. I'm not sure which one. Here is the Yard, Asian yardlock green beans. I'll be harvesting this afternoon. And my oh, my herb garden. Sage, basil. They're finally getting growing. Uh, this one is rosemary. Not doing good. And then uh, that's oregano. more bananas with racks there's actually two more racks in here there's one right there i mean and then in the pen area out here there's more racks over there um this is another uh asian yard long over here oh my buzz buttons are doing great and so is the butternut squash. And I'm gonna come around here. All right, we planted the rest of the butternut squash in here and it's going good. We're gonna hopefully get a good harvest of them. This was the original first one. And as you can tell, you have one butternut. It's a small one, but I'll take it. I'll we'll do it. This is my butterfly pea. My blue butterfly pea. The heat has started to suppress it. Um, it's dying. As long as we keep it watered, it'll still produce. But I have seed pods. So that way I can grow it for next year. And then our sweet set garden. Um, again... Asian yarn on green or green beans are growing. I've harvested all the sunflowers. That is some type of spinach. I'm not sure what kind, but it's surviving the heat. And then there's the banana rose again. So we'll go around. Holy cow, it's getting hot. The heat, the humidity is really starting to get to me. So but uh, we also had Asian yard long green beans growing in here. 
sunflowers didn't quite make it this one i was hoping it would hold on but it didn't oh well and then that's our burn pile and we'll go over here and this is the back side uh this is the mini this is the food forest two um this is the overgrown part we got sugar cane in here which is in the back those stalks are sugar cane Besides the bananas, we got cassava. Cassava is a root crop. There is a lemon and lime tree back here. <clears throat> oh, there's He-Man and She-Ra eating the grass. Um, then we have another pink crepe myrtle. This one was given to us by our neighbor. Oh, a breeze. <gasps> and it's kind of cool too oh yes breeze but that's another pink crepe myrtle we got from our neighbor across the street and then over here is the elderberry plant that i purchased a while back that's been producing like crazy and we are back to where we started So yeah, that's all that's been going on here on the farm. It's a breeze and it's a cool breeze. It ain't a hot breeze. I need to get in. Get some water in me. Oh, I'm thirsty. And it's hot. AC. <laughs> Alright guys, so... Here is the summer tour. So far, everything's going good. And other than us trying to get everything back under control because we are way behind, um, we're just gonna truck along. You know, our farm, a lot of it lives on neglect. A lot of the plants live on neglect. We water them and we just let them grow. And it works well here in Florida. If you can grow on neglect, it can work. It, and it does work. We're showing you proof of it on how to do different things, how to how to make things grow. We are constantly trying because our biggest thing is because of our zone. And we're in an area where we can grow tropical fruit, but if we get any type of frost or freezes, we lose them. So, but we can't really grow like lettuce and kale and spinach unless it's in the cold. So we do what we can, but that's part of homesteading. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.